Welcome to our Dolby Atmos 9.1.6 home cinema room. We're going to take you on a tour and show you what makes this room magic. This cinema is inside our award-winning Experience Centre showroom in Rugby. Thank you very much to Cedia for awarding us that this year, it was fantastic. Let's have a quick chat about the design element. And it's very similar to how we design a cinema or even a whole home automation system in a customer's house. We start with 2D plans that we look at and we mark out the space. We then spoke to our friend Simon Grattage over at Cinemas and he built the entire thing in virtual reality. And this is incredible, it allows us to put on an Oculus Rift headset and literally move around and, and look at the space and go, actually, I, I do like the, that colour or I don't like how those two areas meet and join up together. We've got a 9.1.6 sound system in this room, but what does that mean? That means we've got nine speakers around us, six overhead for the Atmos channels. You have one bass channel. However, in this room, we're actually running a lot of bass. We'll come to that in just a moment. They're all a part of the James Mavericks range. We've used them because they sound fantastic and they will push to very high volumes with no distortion. The fronts, we've got the MQ84s. Most speakers have got a tweeter for the higher frequencies and their main driver for the mid-range. Your bass is then handled separately by the subwoofers. And the way that these ones work is they have four tweeters in an array, so it gives a really wide angle, because normally the higher the frequency, the more directional it is, but by having that design, it gives a fantastic wide dispersion over this whole space. Underneath those eight fours, we've got what we call the M152s. So these are two dual 15 inch subs. So in essence, you've got four 15 inch subwoofers in here. That is a lot of bass. Around the sides, we've got more James Mavericks. We've got seven of them around us. So these are the five inch drivers with again, those four tweeters and these are a titanium one inch speaker. Really nice all the way around. So overhead, we've got six Atmos channels. Atmos is a real buzzword within the industry at the moment. A lot of people ask for it, but what they are are very subtle channels that are above you it's designed to give you an effect so it's only when you would have let's say rain falling or if there's a plane coming directly over you'll hear those channels really kick in so it is very very important when you are designing a cinema to put as much as you can into the front speakers because that's where the majority of the work is done you can have the best speakers imaginable but if you don't have the right acoustics in the room it's never going to sound right so let's go and have a look at our acoustic treatment and what we've done to help this space Why do we have acoustic treatment in a cinema room? We have it to control, funnily enough, the acoustics and how the room itself sounds. Now what a lot of people will do is just pack the room with sound deadening. And it will work, but what you'll end up with is a room that sounds what we call dead. So if you clap, there's no reverberation, there's, there's no echo from anywhere in the room. And what we're aiming to do is treat the room properly so we have the right amount of reverberation and reflection in the right areas. From the very front of the screen, if someone's talking, you want the sound to come directly to you from the screen. You sit in your prime listening position and you'll find the reflection point from that speaker onto the side walls. And that is funny enough called the first reflection point. And in there, we want to absorb the sound. Going on though, if we have explosions and sound effects, what we don't want there is it to be pinpointed directly from a speaker. And so into those spaces, we have diffusion. As the sound is made from that speaker, it'll then go all the way around and you won't be able to pinpoint it, not from a specific speaker itself. And the same goes for the Atmos channels. We do this by putting, like I said, either absorption or diffusion panels into the room. And what we've done here as well is we've used our tracking system around the room and inlaid LED, this is actually Cobb LED, so chip on board, around the room, all fully colour changing with your RGB spectrum. Or oh, it is lovely warm white. Depends on what you want to use the room for at the time. So at the moment, we've got this particular colouring on it, but if we want to, we could remove this fabric and swap it for something else relatively easily. Let's actually go and have a look in the rack and see what's powering this whole room. Now we're not going to go through the entire rack today because that's powering the whole showroom. We're just going to focus on the bits that are doing the cinema themselves. Let's start with the sources. So this is the Kaleidoscape. 
And that is the only legal movie storage system in the world. What it gives you is the full, uncompressed audio and video as the director intended you to see it. What you do with the Kaleidoscape is you pre-download the film, but then you own it and it lives on the hard drives inside that machine. At any point, you can hit play with your internet's working or not, and it will play. Fantastic bit of kit and really well, well worth it if you're into a proper dedicated cinema. We also have a Skybox, because sometimes you might want to watch the sport in there or normal TV. If you want to watch Formula One in UHD, it looks amazing in a cinema like that. Let's have a look at the real chunky stuff. This is the Storm ISP Elite processor. So what this does, it takes all the sources that are coming into the cinema, the Kaleidoscape and the skyboxes, and it then decodes the signals and sends it out where it needs to go. This amplifier powers all the main speakers. So it's all the ones around you, the fronts and the Atmos channels. The only ones it doesn't power is the subs. They're so big and so power hungry, they've got their own dedicated amplifier each. And these are the James 1000 watt amplifiers. Very, very powerful bits of kiss. Now, we've got all this equipment, but how do we control this all? So we control this room using control four. This is the brains of it. This is what we call the director. This is an EA3, which is big enough for this kind of project. But what that does is that talks to everything else and it then knows what's meant to go in where, what's talking to what. So let's go back into the cinema and have a look at how we interact with it. We've just shown you the Control 4 processor that's in the rack, and that is just a rack-based piece of equipment, and it's what talks to everything else that's on the system. But what you use to actually control it is one of the interfaces. Now, it could be something as simple as this. This is an SR260. The big thing that a lot of people say to us when we put a control system in is, oh, it's gonna be complicated and I won't know how to use it. But that's not the case. If you had a remote control for all the different bits of kit, you'd probably have around about 10 different remote controls, whereas here, you have one. And you just press Watch Kaleidoscape, and thanks to Control 4 and the power of automation, it knows what to turn on, and what inputs, and how to set things up. If that's not fancy enough for you, you can go for the Neo. Beautiful. Does the same thing as the SR260, but it's touchscreen, a lot slimmer, looks a lot more exclusive. If you're putting it into a dedicated cinema room, that is the one to go for. You can always use your mobile phone, which is great for doing things like lighting control, or I've got the intercom on here, so if someone rings the door, it pops up. And then there are the touch screens that can either be uh, freestanding like this one, or mounted directly to the wall. We've looked at the remote controls and the touch screens, but there's another way that Control 4 can operate this room. Let's go and have a look at that now. These are Crestron's keypads. Now we've been talking about Control 4 in here, and as we'll show you in a later video, we actually got both Control 4 and Crestron control systems out in the wider showroom. We also have Lutron as a lighting system that runs all of the lighting in here. We want to be able to give you, the customer, the option to actually choose what it is that you want to do, which one suits you the best. These keypads though are beautiful bits of kit. So you got a Cameo and a Horizon. They can be engraved and they can make them do anything you want from the lighting controls right down to here, we've got them opening a motorized door. When you've got lots and lots of lighting circuits in a space, so the cinema, or especially kitchens and bedrooms, the last thing you want is a bank of switches on the wall that no one can remember what they do and don't do. So we use lighting scenes. So if you're relaxing, watching a film, if you want them all on or off, and that's what we're doing here. We can have a movie scene, a TV scene, there is even a rainbow scene, which is a multicolored, just color changing one. You saw the Storm audio and video processor in the equipment rack earlier. That's feeding out a fiber optic HDMI lead and going into a Sony projector. This is the Sony VPL VW590ES projector, and it's a great projector. We use this in here because it's got the right brightness at 1800 lumens for this size screen and this type of room. Really reliable, being a Sony, it has a fantastic picture quality. So from the projector, it shines the image onto our screen research horizontal masking screen. Let's go have a quick look at that. If you're watching the normal TV, the sport or the news, it's in widescreen. And it fills the whole screen in your television. But when you start to film, you'll notice the black bars on the top and bottom. And that's because the image is in anamorphic. So what we do here, which is what you see at the cinema, when the film itself starts, the curtains open a bit wider. And we literally 
move the size of the screen out, all motorised by Sonfi motors that are built into it, the image fills the entire screen. So you see it as the director intended, and you get as many pixels as possible onto the screen to make the best of the image. This is all automated, back with our Control 4 system. It talks to the Kaleidoscape and it knows how to do that. And this particular screen is a weave, and it's just the way the fibres are interwoven. There's a couple of ways of doing it. We like the weave, but you can have a perforated screen. It's personal preference. We think these ones look a little bit better, and they sound fantastic. The only thing left to show you now is a real comfy bit, which is the seats. Let's go and have a look at those. One of the things that you will probably interact with most in the cinema, especially in this one, are the seats. These are Fortress's seats. At the front here, we've got the Kensingtons. They are gorgeous design seats with a leather outer and a suede inner. And the backs, we've got the Californias. So cool because these seats are all handmade over in California in the States. So it's a hello to everyone watching over on that side of the pond. You can have these in almost any fabric, leather finish and colour that you desire. There's a massive swatch of collection for you to choose from. It can even go as far as having something embossed into the back, which is amazing if you've got, say, a football club or a home emblem, something like that. Next door, we've got them with wireless charging built into the arms, but you can have cup holders. They can even do a little fridge in the middle if you've got to keep your bubbly at just the right temperature. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed the tour of the cinema that's in our showroom. We'll be showing you the rest of the Experience Centre in a later video, so make sure you like and subscribe to watch that one. If you do have any questions, please drop it in the comments below. If not, we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.